Hello and welcome to Into Your Life podcast. I'm Lenka and I'm joined here by my wonderful co-host Natalie. Hi, we invite you to join our weekly conversations about finding more life in one's life. Well, what does it actually mean? We have discussions about ways to live happier, healthier and more fulfilling lives, both personally and professionally. That sounds great. Let's go. Natalie, I have a question. Do you like sauna or not? Well, let me give you a bit of a context. As we talk a lot about our health and well-being habits and practices and things we're exploring, we're bringing into our lives, we're discussing with our guests, then we're changing how we live, we're implementing and removing and seasons change. So I'm curious to know where it comes to your healthcare routine, where it comes to you, where you're at right now, and specifically, what are your opinions about sauna and hot and cold and all of that? Oh, thanks for that. Hot and cold and sauna and all that. <laughs> I used to love saunas. I used to love them. I would spend hours in them. I would spend hours in the jacuzzis. I love a good long bath, you know, bubble bath with a book, candles, glass wine, all that. I used to love it. And I would, that for me was an absolute chill out once a week, have the bath. When I was uh, members of gyms, it was always a gym that had a sauna or a jacuzzi. And if they had both, even better. And then over the last few years, I'd say about the last eight to 10 years, just the thought of getting into a bath is like, oh my God. So people, I've not bathed in over (laughs) six or seven years. It's a little bit whiffy, but yes, I get the whole feeling of it. And I don't know whether it's because my body's been changing over the last few years, if what it what it is. But when I lived in a hot country, I love the sauna and a bath. I live in a cold country. It's raining. It's grey. I mean, it's perfect bath weather. Nope. Give me a shower. Not a bath. And I have tried it. I've tried to have the Epsom salts baths to help my muscles. And it's like, this is stressful. I'm lying in this bath and it's just, it's uncomfortable, it's hot, not happy bunny. So it's really interesting how that has changed for me. And I'd love to know if any of our audience have had that experience where they've loved it. But the funny thing is, I've also noticed the same with cold, is I used to love swimming. Um, I still love swimming, but I used to love going into the cold water, d- diving straight into the pool the ocean, anything, um, having the cold showers in summer. I used to love that. And now cold showers or when I was in South Africa in in January this year and it was 45 degrees and I was putting my toe in the pool and I'm like, oh, man, I can't do this. I can't do this. It was this this cold feeling. So it's really weird that you're bringing up this topic now when I've gone through this massive change don't like the the hot of the bath and the saunas don't like the cold of the swimming pool or cold showers so i'd love to know your thoughts because you love a good sauna don't you lenka well i always thought that well conversation over we're done (laughs) but yeah i love both i love a good sauna session and i do love a good cold dip into As you said, be the sea, be the river, be the lake. Anytime I can get, especially a natural body of water, I'm in. Be it, you know, a loch somewhere on a hike in Scotland, gorgeous. Be it the sea anywhere in Scotland, in Ireland, somewhere tropical, I don't mind. Be it when visiting my friend in Barcelona, any time of the year after a hike, either the swimming pool they have in their apartment complex, which people were looking at me like I'm crazy when last time I was swimming there, I think it was like 
April, March, but it was gorgeous, sunny, 25 degrees. We were on a hike. So what is the best thing after all day sweaty hike? Cold swimming pool, just to rest. So yeah, I'm definitely on the bandwagon of saunas and cold showers, the hot and cold, using this as one of my workout days or one of my fitness days to go into the gym, maybe do a bit of cardio on that day, but mostly go to the gym because they have a sauna, because they have cold shower. I am missing a proper cooling pool. I mean, I love a good cooling pool when you immerse yourself and you feel like your body's going to die for about 15 seconds. And after 15 seconds, your body's like, hmm, we're not going to die. It's okay. It's annoying. It's uncomfortable, but it's okay. And the more I've been looking into the science, into the research that comes through, it makes sense that it's becoming so much more popular these days. And it's not just with the Wim Hof and you know his uh, followers and his teaching. There is incredible science looking at countries like Denmark, Scandinavia, or even places like Ireland and Scotland, where it is becoming so popular to go out to the sea, to swim all year round, all ages, across the board. I've been in pressed by the amount of people going swimming on a daily basis in March in Ireland. This tiny little fishing town and the beaches were buzzing. On the weekend they have a portable sauna so you can book an hour in the sauna and do a couple turns on in there in March and in a beach. So I'm definitely a convert now. Obviously I understand that maybe hormones, maybe age, maybe experience is going to change it. It would be interesting to see how it changes that if I move from reasonably cold country or reasonably extreme country in Czech Republic for, you know, the drier summers to somewhere where it's more humid, if the humidity is going to change my experiences. But I definitely don't think I'm going to be giving up hot and cold anytime soon. I do definitely get the the science behind it and the the benefits of it it's it is very beneficial uh and and like you said you know going for a hot a hike and sweating there is nothing better than having a swim i mean i used to love it in south africa we play sports or go walking do any activity and then it was about the swimming swimming to cool down swimming to exercise just swimming for any reason you could just swim and I and I recently watched a little documentary of of from Wim Hof, uh, just about just a tiny bit about his story and and what got in him into this this ice swimming. I've not look, read any of his books. I've not looked deeply into it. It was just a, a an episode I was or a guy I was following on YouTube, which had this this episode in. And I do get it. I understand the benefits, and I think if I I don't know, put my big girl pants on and really, you know, made an effort, I could do it. But then do I really want to bother right now making the effort? But it is something that I'm I have found really interesting. I've come across people, there's a, a woman I know in Northern Ireland who swims in the sea every day of the year. That's like energizes her. And I'm like, are you nuts? I get she lives in a beautiful part of Ireland. It's gorgeous coast, gorgeous beach. I get that for summer, but but why the winter? And it's something that she's just started to do. The wild swimming, you've mentioned it about people swimming, this wild swimming, this going back to almost back to our roots, back to nature. And it it is so therapeutic. It is a great way to help with your health, help with your mental well-being. So I fully understand or get the benefits of it. As I said, I just myself at the moment where I'm at, I'm it's not something that I want to aspire to. I'm trying to aspire to other things. But I've been thinking about so where we come from as humanity, as as people, and, you know, if you think we were nomads way back when, 
and there was no hot baths or, you know, let's go have a shower or anything. You used to bathe in the rivers and the lakes to to clean yourself and to relax. You, you, you know, some of the knights or the warriors, when they get back from battle, they would go into the lake and just almost cleanse themselves, soothe themselves, relax. And why, when did this start with the hot water? I think we can most probably blame the Romans for that. They're the ones who came up with the hot baths and the, essentially the saunas. I think they created them. But it's in our DNA somewhere back there, this being able to immerse in the cold there's a play, I think it's either in Iceland or is it somewhere in Russia, one of these really extremely cold places where on New Year's, what do they do? They break the ice and they go, you know, dip into the water and it's a whole big tradition. I just can't remember which country it is. And you you see the, the, the layer of ice. I mean, it's thick. It's not just a little thin layer. It's, you know, they're hammering away to break the layer of this ice to swim and then it's into something hot or warm and it's like, wow, that must be so amazing for other people, not for me. <laughs> but, yeah, it's 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 really interesting how a lot of us or a lot of other people, when I say us, I mean you and everybody else, are almost going back to the roots, are going back to the way we used to be as the nomadic travelers, as nomadic wanderers that, that we were. And... Yeah, maybe that's what we need to do to to help us move forward. So I know I've just gone off on a totally different tangent there, but but yeah, it's it's something that I really do get the benefits of it. And I think it's it's maybe worth experiencing once and just seeing what happens. I'm interested to see if this is a phase for me, and then as I go through the the perimenop and the menopause will it go back to the way it used to be or is this now how it is or do I just need to suck it up one day and just deal with it we'll see I'll let you know in 10 years time how's that I take that but I think it comes down to what you touched on with well what is the goal what is the purpose what is the aspiration and obviously you and our listeners, viewers might by now know that one of my ultimate goals is to live as healthily, as happily for as long as I can and to be as capable when I get there. So that's where all the science of longevity and health and implementing, you know, being more rigorous with my gym, being more into exercise and healthy eating and mental well-being and fit. And that's where the sauna comes in place. Right now, I am enjoying it. I think, you know, it is a lot about the mindset to then think about certain things. Obviously, um, lots of people don't enjoy gym, for example, when they start going. I was one of them. I did work hard. And now I get to the point of like, hmm, going to gym every day is who I am. I'm not thinking about it. It's just happening. One caveat, one random tangent that you mentioned that always gets me so confused is the fact that we call outdoor swimming wild swimming because that's the OG, that's the original swimming. We were always swimming outside before we've built. So why don't we call swimming pools like artificial swimming and we don't leave the normal swimming, just, just swimming? This is one of those things that always gets us like, why is it wild? It's, it's not that wild, like to lots of us right now, lots of people in this world it's probably pretty wild but for me it's like that's the normal way of swimming that's how like it, we did not start swimming in swimming pools we learned to swim in seas and lakes and rivers and i think it is a combination of hot and cold depending where we're at because hot water is also natural we have natural hot springs we have natural hot sources and if you look at cultures like japan where there's so many onsens it is part of the culture, it's part of the health. And again, in scientific research, you can see that this has an impact on both physical and mental health and brings in the benefits for the longevity. So this was a question that I had in my mind. 
if I'm the only one who is really right now obsessed with sauna and enjoying it. It's my meditation moment. Usually if I go in the midday, there's no one else around there. So I get, you know, a couple 15, 20 minute seg seg segments because I do the like tw 15, 20 minutes in, break out for an hour. I usually three rounds. It's kind of like an hour of meditation. And if there are people around, it's still a meditation. Just trying to block out all their noises. Or if it's just me, it's with this bliss of doing good for the body, but also then having time to myself. And I'd be curious to know what our listeners and viewers think. Are sauna, yes, no, called bath, yes, no? Have you seen any benefits? Have you seen any physical improvements, mental improvements? Is there anything that, you know, we might have missed in this quick chat? We'd love to hear from you. Let us know in the comments below or drop us a message anywhere on social media where you find us. If you enjoyed listening to our conversation, please share it with your friends and colleagues and don't forget to subscribe. We would love it if you could give us a five-star rating and write a short review.